All right. Welcome to our Monday night Zoom. I'm so excited to hang out with you guys. I've had a couple of things just kind of mulling over in my heart that we will cover and keep it as short as we can too, so y'all can get good sleep tonight. <laughs> but I want to go through some announcements first. First of all, who was able to attend a Momentum Meetup this weekend? There were several, I think I heard like 500. Is that accurate? 400, 500, I heard both numbers. Locations all over the country, some were virtual, some in person. Um, watching this training that Plexus put out, uh, we had a local one here in North Carolina, Carrie Barnes hosted one. I know we had team members that went to one in Georgia and down in Florida. So throw out in the comments if you were able, or in the chat, if you were able to attend, it was fantastic. If you missed it and you have FOMO and you're like, what was the training and how do I get my hands on it? Send me a message, just make sure you have that. Um, it's really powerful to me, you know, here it was called Momentum Meetup. And is it just me? I would assume that if it's about momentum, we're gonna hear like how to get fired up and do the things and increase your activity and, and move the needle in your business and, and move forward in massive momentum. And here the keynote speaker really honed in on your work life and family life balance, um, hitting things like having dinner with your family at night and making sure your phone is off when you're not working so that you're present with your family. I mean, just like such good practical things so that we are doing this well without regrets. And so that those that are closest to us have the best things to say about us when we pass. I mean, it was so perfect and it, it speaks to our culture as a company, it speaks to the values that we hold and I just really thought it was powerful. So if you have not yet watched it, get your hands on the link, I'd be happy to help you. Morgan has it, I'm sure Carrie has it. It's in our push thread if you're on that thread. Uh, there's also a worksheet as well with many questions to really unpack it for yourself and for your own circumstances and family and work. Um, to make the needed adjustments to do this well. And I think this is the perfect time to do that. So want to touch on that. Who has ordered a gift box yet this month for the holidays? They're so fun. They're so, so fun. Not just to order for yourself though, but one more reason to connect with all of your customers, all of your VIPs and make sure they've heard about it as well as the $20 off when you add a reset to your order, any order of $50 or more, throw in a reset get a discount. So make sure your people know that as well. We love reset. We have two boxes downstairs that we're gearing up to do at some point soon. Hey, babe. Hey. <laughs> um, Black Friday. Did you guys see the teaser for Black Friday? So that's going to be right around the corner. I did throw that in the info page as well. So I'm looking at these different things, let alone the extra cash incentive. And I'll highlight that, but I'm looking just at the gift boxes, the $20 off and the Black Friday. And I'm thinking, you know what? Anyone on our team that is ready to go after another goal, go after some growth, there are these extra gifts right here for you to implement a strategy and go ahead and execute your goal. I mean, it's ridiculous the things they give us that you don't even have to come up with it. You have the tools already in your tool belt to be connecting with people. All you need is the vision, put the strategy in place and go ahead and get it done. Beyond that, earn some extra cash for Christmas. I love when Flexus does this. I think it speaks to their heart for desiring um, for our families to be provided for. I am a huge proponent, advocate, for not going into debt at Christmas time, please don't do that. You have a way to earn the money that you might desire to then have the Christmas that you desire. You guys know our story. There were many, many years that we did not buy a Christmas tree or buy Christmas gifts. We were just so determined to be blessable with our finances. We did not want to go into debt for that. And my, like, had we had this, I would have gone after it like crazy to be able to get a Christmas tree and gifts for the kids. Um, so I love that they have these extra incentives and there's no better time to go after it than now. So enroll three people, get an extra $100 cash. Enroll six, get an extra $400 on top of your other bonuses and sign up nine and get an additional $800. So if you haven't yet connected with your sponsor or whoever coaches you through your business, do so and get your strategy in place to go after the goals and the needs and desires that you have for your family in this season. But that's not what this Zoom is about. I do not like doing announcements. <laughs> like, wow, that's super fun. Okay, let's get to the real stuff. This is what I've had in my heart for like literally the last couple of weeks. Having done all the stand, stand, 
Have you guys heard that verse before? Ephesians 6, 13, having done all the stand, stand therefore, throw in the chat for me, what are you standing in faith for? What are you believing God for? Have you heard that even come out of your mouth? They're like, we are just standing in faith for this. Maybe you're standing in faith for a breakthrough in your finances. You're standing in faith for a breakthrough in your marriage. You're standing in faith for a breakthrough for one of your children. Maybe you have a prodigal that you are praying for and believing that they'll return home. You're, you're standing in faith to hit the next rank in your business. You are, you snuck in. Yay. <laughs> What's going on, girlfriend? Oh, I'm so distracted. Okay. You're standing in faith for what was I saying? A rock star to join your business, to hit the next rank for your team to just explode. And you don't even know what happened. What are you standing in faith for? What are you believing God for? I, we had years that that's, that's how we worded it with our kids. We are just believing God for a breakthrough in our finances, or if they needed new shoes, we're like, let's believe God for new tennis shoes, or let's believe God for Christmas gifts. Let's believe God for whatever it was that we were in need of. Um, but amidst that, the next question would be, have you done all? Having done all to stand, stand. Can you say you've done all? Now, if you're like me and I ask myself that question, I go right into practical things. For instance, if I think of Judah having done all to stand, stand there for and believe for his healing in his body. And if I ask myself, well, Krista, have you done all? No, I haven't. <laughs> and that was actually what drove me into the ground with horrible health in his first two years of life. Because I went bonkers trying to do all in my strength and in my power, finding every therapy and every doctor and driving everywhere and doing fundraisers, doing so many things, but it was in my strength, right? And so I don't mean just like, are you, if you're believing for a breakthrough in your business, are you like cranking it in your IPAs? Like, yes, you need to be stewarding it well, but, and there's these practical things you have to do, but I want to go beyond just like, the, the practical side. I don't want to like launch us into like, we just have to be striving more, but it is a really good assessment of our, have we done all to stand in the natural, but also in the spiritual. When our finances fell apart, like literally fell apart, it felt like it was overnight, but it was a crumbling over a little bit of time. We found ourselves at this rock bottom pit of a mess of finances, and we wanted to make sure we were blessable. And so we did look at the practical side, we looked at the spiritual side, but we had to repent for what we had done and for our part in the mess that we had made and repent to others and repent to our children and to one another, repent to the Lord. We needed to take an honest assessment of how we spend our money and just go crazy radical. We were like so determined to be blessable with our finances and to, to sow what we could sow, to sell what we could sell. We went crazy nuts for years. It took us a long time to kind of come out of that pit. But say, say that you are distracted. <laughs> say that you are <laughs> <laughs> say that you are standing in faith for a breakthrough in your marriage have you done all to stand have you scheduled the date nights or are you waiting with offense for your husband to do what you're longing for that you haven't communicated to him to even do right are you waiting for this breakthrough and you're standing in faith for a breakthrough in your finances but you recognize that God has asked you to deal with some things and you haven't been willing to deal with it you're standing in faith for a team to come, but you haven't even addressed some character issues. The Lord's like, hey, we got to get to the root of some of this before I put a hundred people, a thousand people under your leadership. These are my people. Let's go ahead and work through some things. You know, if you go to the verses that are right before that, I'm not going into like, I, I'm sure like someone who's really smart could really break down what all these verses really meant. So this is the Krista version. So we'll just go with it. Okay. But right before verse 13, where it talks about having done all the stand, stand right before it, it isn't talking about the doing all the activities. It's interesting because it says a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on all of God's army so that you armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but we're fighting against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. I think our battle has a little bit more to do 
with some spiritual stuff than just some IPAs maybe, and some maybe not just some date nights or just making a budget with Dave Ramsey. What do you think? So maybe it's your marriage that you're contending for. Have you gone into the secret place and made sure that you're going to stand against what the enemy, like the true enemy of your soul? Are you going to take a stand and say, hey, no more. You will not be messing with our marriage. And have you reminded him like who you are in Christ? Have you refused the spirit of offense in your marriage? How about within your team? Have you gotten to the root of the issues, right? Within your children, is there anything that you can repent for and humble yourself and go before them? Can you do your part in the natural, but also in the spiritual? I think there's so often that we're like standing in faith, just believing God for my next breakthrough, but have you done the last thing he convicted your heart to do? The last time that you were in prayer and he put his finger on something, did you take care of it? So that's my first encouragement to you tonight. But the second part is what else is required when we're standing in faith and we're, we're in a season that maybe we're not seeing things with our eyeballs <laughs> that, we're, that we long for in our hearts. You need a long-term vision. You've got to even just know where you're going. You've got to know what you're even standing on. What has the Lord said? You've got to ensure, did the Lord say for you to do this? Then stand firm, therefore, right? And has he given you vision of why and where you're headed? And it doesn't mean that he's put writing in the sky and you see every single detail. It's likely that's not the case. But there's often a stirring in your heart for why you are here. And there's a dream in your heart that keeps you looking far ahead of where you want to go. I'm going to show you something. You know, Chad and I love road trips. Our family loves road trips. But when I say that, two things start flashing before my mind. On one hand, we love road trips. We have these great memories. We've seen Mount Rushmore and like the rocky cliffs on the coast of Oregon. And I don't know, the mountains in Tennessee. I, so many Waldrug. beautiful. What? Waldrug. Waldrug. I don't remember that. <laughs> um, we've seen so many things. <laughs> And we have these beautiful pictures and these sweet memories and it's epic. But you know what else has happened? Poopy diapers have had to be changed <laughs> on the side of the road in a cornfield. And there's times that we think we have lost our ever loving minds. Why did we ever think of doing this? And we've had flat tires. We've had cars break down. We've had to swap out cars and use another van because our van broke down as we were leaving for a road trip. <laughs> I mean, I think we have more stories of what has gone awry on our road trips than what's gone well. But there's so many people that they'll see it on social media. They're like, you guys are amazing. That's so cool. I can never do that. I'm like, I can't either. Listen, sometimes it's horrible. Stay up really for four years. She just really hasn't been very fun to ride with. And sometimes Judah, it's complicated. It's very complicated to do a road trip. So there's two aspects to it. But I need to show you something here when I figure out screen share. Hmm. <laughs> Here we go. Can you guys see this picture? Um, I can't see the chat to know if you see the picture actually. A good thumbs up from Morgan. If she's okay, there. I can see Morgan. You can see a picture. It's not very clear. This is from like 2013 before things were cooler <laughs> when he made pictures. <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, this is a, a map that shows our very first road trip. But this was pre-Plexus. Uh, the only way we were able to do this is that we put all of our things in storage and we no longer had a house payment and therefore we could hit the road. Chad's job was movable. <laughs> he was <laughs> what's the word? Mobile. mobile. His job was mobile. He could work on the road. Uh, we really felt like the Lord had asked us to take this trip. We assumed we would be leaving Lakeland for good and moving. And so we stepped out in obedience. We went on what became a four-month road trip. It was a very open-ended road trip. We didn't know if we'd be gone years or what would happen. We hit the road. And you can see there were several stops. They look hilarious on my computer screen, but goodness sakes. But we went to St. Augustine, and we stopped in Georgia, in the mountains of Tennessee. Um, we saw family in Illinois. We made all different stops. Some of those were for a few days. Some were for weeks. Some were for months. We have great memories from this trip. We saw great things. Yes, there are some detours. There are some crazy things that happened. But all in all, great travel, great memories, great things. At the end of it, do you know where we ended up? 
we ended up heads hanging low, right back where we started. Why? We didn't have a vision of where we were actually going to end up to begin with. We didn't know where we were going. And so, yes, it was a great journey. Yes, we learned some great things. We saw great sights. We've got great pictures. At the end of the day, we came right back to where we started. And I really feel that there are people here. I don't know how to go back out of this screen share. You're doing a lot of great things and you're seeing some great sights and you've made great friends and you've had some great travel and great things have happened. But if you don't get a vision for where you're going, I'm afraid you're gonna end up right where you started, not because you want to. You know, we ended up back at Lakeland, not because we wanted to, we just kind of couldn't figure it out. And so we went back, he heads hanging low, knowing that Lakeland wasn't home. Maybe four years later that we'd finally kind of have the courage to leave <laughs> and uh, clarity from the Lord that it was time. But so often we don't even know where we're going. We don't even know why we're here. And so we're hitting these detours and these roadblocks, but it's super hard if you don't know what you're standing on and if you don't know where you're going. And I really implore of you that you take the time and slow down if you even need to, to ensure first that you know God is asking you to do this. And then ensure number two, that you know why you're here and where in the world you're headed. You can't ask people to jump into your car and go on the road trip with you if you can't tell them where you're going. And you're going to get burned out. That next flat tire and the next stop along the way, you're going to get weary because you don't know where you're going. <laughs> Chad, maybe we, we maybe have like an arm up and leg up. <laughs> we maybe have this advantage that, yes, we had experienced network marketing two decades before. Yes, we had invested money to travel and go meet with diamonds in that company and see their lifestyle firsthand. We had a taste of time freedom. We knew what it could do. We also felt like we had heard from the Lord that we needed to um, get to a place of going diamond and have time freedom, financial freedom to step into ministry. So when this came back around, though I did not recognize it initially and didn't want it, it did take a while to catch on like, oh my goodness, I think the Lord is bringing us right back to these words he spoke years ago, but we did have a pretty clear vision of what this could be. We knew what time freedom looked like. We knew what financial freedom looked like. And we had this sense of urgency to go ahead and go after it and go bonkers. You know, did it mean there wasn't delays or disappointments? No. And, and the same will be for you. I don't know what page I'm on. Where's my paper? <laughs> Where there's no vision, the people perish, right? Take your vision. Figure it out. If you don't know it, slow down and figure it out. If you're married, pray with your spouse and determine, even if it's just like a breadcrumb that the Lord's giving you, go start going after the breadcrumb. Like take one step at a time as he unfolds the vision that he has over your life. But take your vision and put a date on it. Map it out. <laughs> if I was going on a trip from North Carolina, where is it? North Carolina to California, I would map it out. I would map out the stops along the way. Where, what places do we want to see? How long do we want to stay there for? You're going to have to map it out from silver to diamond. Let's see, when do you want to go gold? And when do you want to go ruby? And yes, you might have to adjust your dates. So do we in the natural. And so did we in our business on a road trip and in business. We had to adjust those dates, but we knew what we were going after and we put a date on it and we put a plan and a strategy in place and we partnered with the Lord asking him, what are you saying in this season? Is this a rest season or a run season? Do we like lace up our shoes and go after this? Or is there something you're trying to shift in us before that next running season, right? So take your vision and put a date on it, map it out, put it before you, but listen, expect delays. That's normal, it happens. Expect that there will be detours. It's so normal and it happens and you've got to have the emotional maturity to handle it and know that this is normal. Embrace it, find out everything you can while you're in that delay and in that detour. Expect the check engine light to come on sometimes. 
the check engine light of your heart, <laughs> the check engine light of your family, the check engine light in your marriage. There's times there's going to be friction. That is your check engine light. Pay attention to it so your car doesn't blow up. Pull off the road and take the time to figure out why is that light on? I think it's worth it. Y'all, times that we have ignored the check engine light, was it worth it to ignore it? Did it cost more? It inevitably cost us more money because we ignored it for so long. So what probably started out as an oil change turned into like replacing the engine. I really don't know. I just know that that kind of stuff happened. Um, expect frustrations. Expect refining. And embrace it. I'm my worst version of myself on road trips. No lie. And every time I think this is the road trip that I'm going to get from where do we live now? North Carolina to wherever we're going. And I'm going to make it all the way with good patience. And on my own, I don't last very long. I need the Lord's help. It's refining and it's shaping in my character and in our kids' character and in our marriage. It's just like you're forced into a 15-passenger van and you're just sitting with each other all day long, you know? It can be crazy. So expect that there will be frustrations. There will be refining. Expect doubt and expect discouragement. This is like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be doomsday, but this is just the reality of life, is it not? Are we promised that we'll have a life with no trials? No. Expect that people might even think you're crazy but you can expect to live like no one else. Our pastor back in Minnesota used to say the risk takers are the history makers. The biggest thing I'm sensing right now for you guys in this season especially is the lack of vision. If you know where you're going and you know why you're here, you can navigate those disappointments and you can navigate the detours, you can navigate the delays because you're standing. Having done all to stand, stand, stand in the natural, know that you're doing all the things. I don't want to hear, yep, I'm going for a senior Ruby, but then look at your calendar and see that you never work. Like, okay, there's some practical stuff, right? Having done all to stand, do it in the natural, give it your best effort, do it as unto the Lord, take authority in the supernatural, Spend more time on your knees and in the prayer closet than anything else. That was a mistake I made in different seasons where I was learning more from men and women and podcasts than I was from the word of God and from asking the best mentor ever. He will guide you through all of this, but I am just asking with urgency that each of you take the time to make sure you're standing on solid ground knowing he has placed you here and knowing where he's taking you. You might think dream boards are silly, but cut some pictures out. I don't like buying magazines. I just figure out what is it that we're going after. And I find the picture online and I print it. It's not very hard. Put this before you and know where you're headed. And I promise you, it will be a smoother ride. Amen. Amen. The end. <laughs> when you're done, you're done. When I'm done, I'm done. There's nothing else. It's so, gone. <laughs> I'll say, well, I saw a lot of comments light up and super excited just for the message you shared. And uh, I'm pumped because I feel like this is like a preemptive strike till tomorrow. And <laughs> we're, we get to share uh, tomorrow night in um, the altar school that I'm overseeing right now. And um, I was so pumped when uh, I, Krista said, she mentioned, you know, what we should you should talk about is marketplace ministry. And I said, what you should talk about. Yeah, she said me. And I was like, perfect. Yes, you should be a part of it. Because I was like, literally, you know, no one better in my sphere of influence and all the people I know that are in business for themselves than this lady right here to talk about how to operate in the marketplace ministry and and basically how to how to pursue Jesus in business at the same time. And um, and so anyway, she's gonna be the special guest speaker tomorrow along with some other friends so super in other words pray for krista yes and we uh, so it's gonna be awesome but i just watching um watching you over the years and how you do it and how you pursue pursue jesus and bring all of this um dom dom was listening to this he's like man the anointing is all over this right now so anyways praise god so i just wanted to read this um really Kind of off the cuff felt can uh, compelled just to share this 
part of this word, Matt Powers and, and Emily are dear friends of ours. I don't know if they're on tonight, but uh, he gave a word to Chris and I, and I, I read through it again, and I just really felt like this is a word, not just for us, but it's also for you and for your family and for um, your generations to follow. Um, so I'm just going to read it out, and I just ask that you have open heart to it for you and your, your spouse. This is a time and the season when the Lord is restoring the Adam and Eve's He's bringing you back to the original call and mandate in the garden to rule, subdue, and have dominion over the powers of darkness together. When the Lord put Adam to sleep, he took something from Adam, more than a rib. He never gave back. From, from what that he took, he formed Eve, and instead of giving Adam a new rib, he brought him Eve, which means two things. One, if God removed a piece of Adam, male, and and from it form E, female, then the original Adam must have had contained both the male and female identity of God's image. Two, God did a value add to the rib and brought back a more excellent form of the rib to partner with Adam in the original mandate. She is literally missing half of I Adam's first identity together there, one. So basically it goes on and just talks about the Adam and Eve identity and really spoke to Krista and I. We've kind of even been saying it around the house is that there is because we got so much going on with ministry going this route and Plexus going this route and family and kids and all the things, but we just kind of keep coming back to the Adam and the Eve analogy that Matt shared with us. And I really believe it's it's something for the families that I don't think that there'd be anything worse in our team to see one of you skyrocket to Emerald Sapphire Diamond and then end up getting it. In a, in a divorce or something like that because you grew you grew you grew you grew emotionally you grew spiritually and your husband was left in the dust and all of a sudden you're 100 steps ahead of him in all those areas emotionally spiritually and he's he's just like i don't even know what happened but i i, I don't believe that you can press into this without grabbing your husband's hand for you for ladies that are here and saying hey I want to partner up with you. I, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like for everyone. It's going to be different. There have been seasons that Chris and I ran the business together and, and I was posting just as much as she was and, and doing all the things. There's been times when I have done nothing. There's time, been times when I've sat by your side and said, I can pray for you. I can pray over the team. I can, you know, make space for you to work. And that alone has been you know, an Adam and Eve moment of us grabbing our hands together. And so I, it's going to look different for you guys. Um, but I just encourage you to bring your husbands into this. Pray with them, ask them to say, hey, you know what, I, I don't want to go at this alone. It doesn't mean that you ne necessarily have to make 10 posts a day or anything like that. But I don't want to get to the, the finish line, whatever that looks like on the map for you. And your husband's still in Florida and you're over in Minnesota. So I'm just going to pray over our marriages, pray over uh, families, and just speak that there is a oneness, a unity in what the Lord's doing in, in us. So Father God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing this special business and ministry into our lives. We thank you, Father God, that all the, the husbands and wives that are represented here on this team and all the people that will listen to it here in the future, we just declare, Father God, that there'll be no casualties in this growth, Father God, that when, they're, when we get from point A to point B, whatever you have for us, whether that's sapphire, emerald, ruby, what, even silver, Father God, that there would be zero casualties, that there would be a marriage that's represented that looks like the kingdom, Father. We just declare that there is a deeper sense of communication. I even pray, Father, that there, you know, you're giving the right words to speak. You're giving confidence over the ladies to articulate the dreams of perhaps being debt-free, perhaps going on vacations, perhaps not living paycheck to paycheck, perhaps being able to just go into the grocery store and buy the best groceries and not have to worry about the costs. Whatever that dream is, wherever that takes you, I just declare that there is a oneness between you and your husband. And I just declare that every single hindrance, every single thing that has blocked communication right now in the name of Jesus, we just tear that wall down. Every spirit of division and strife and, and just a lackadaisical spirit that has resided in, in marriages, we just dismantle right now in the name of Jesus. And we just declare that there is a unity over your marriage, unity over your marriage, and that there is a oneness. And we just declare that 
the blood of Jesus reigns over this team. And that I just, whether it, uh, someone's in this business and on a Zoom for their one and done, or whether they're with us for months and years to come, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that your word would just penetrate their heart and that they would be shifted closer to you, closer to eternity, and draw them in, draw them into your heart, Father God. We pray for people here tonight and those that will listen in the future. And we just thank you, Father God, that we get an opportunity to pray, steward this marketplace ministry. And we just declare, Father, for signs and wonders to follow each and every person that is out there pursuing their passion and the things that you put in their heart. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. That's a wrap. We love you, Team Revive. Sleep tight. We'll see you soon.